Hello everybody, it is I, Captain Oblivious Mist, and today we're going to be doing the complete history of the SS Bremen. Yes, you heard that correctly, we're finally covering a North German Lloyd ship. After what feels like over a year, but it hasn't been, I think it's been like 11 months as of recording this intro. But anyways, enough blabbering on, as we need to actually get into the video. As it's been a hot minute, I'll give you a recap, as by the 1920s, German shipping had been decimated by the First World War. Not only this, but thanks to political unrest and their war debt, Germany had defaulted on their reparation payments in 1923, leading to the Ruhr being occupied. This meant that when the German workers in the Ruhr decided to go on strike to oppose the French occupation, the German government had to pay their wages. The problem with this being the way they decided to pay the wages, which was to print more money. And if you're smart, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's not how money works, to which you'd be correct, as all this had resulted in was hyperinflation, which saw the German mark practically become worthless, hurting many German businesses, which made the already difficult job of rebuilding lost German shipping even harder. But thanks to this man called Gustav Streismann, by mid-1920s, the German economy and relations was back on track, and with the rest of the world also rebuilding after the war, it was now time for Germany to start rebuilding its merchant fleet, leading to the North German Lloyd to take one good look at their ships and realise it was time to build two new revolutionary liners. This new liner was going to be constructed by a new shipyard, design-wise she was going to be powered by four sets of geared steam turbine engines, and similar to her sister she was to have a catapult. And no, not so passengers could play Angry Birds in real life, but so they could launch a new thing known as a seaplane off the back of the Bremen. Though this new interesting feature on the Bremen wouldn't stay with the Bremen forever. Still pretty noteworthy. Now, as for a construction process, from what I can see, it was less eventful than the Europa's, as unlike the Europa, the Bremen didn't decide to do this little thing called going, THIS GIRL IS ON FIRE, and burst into flames. But enough talking about the Europa, as this is a video on the Bremen, which was launched on Thursday the 16th of August 1928, by the president of a country that she was soon to become the pride of, Paul von Hindenburg. Her fitting out phase and sea trials would go without event, and by the 5th of July 1929, the Bremen was ready to begin what would prove to be a very short career. Bremen was to be joined by her sister ship, the Europa, on a maiden voyage, but due to a fire on the Europa during her fitting out phase, this did not happen, and she left on her maiden voyage all by her lonesome. Her maiden voyage was going to be from Bremer Harvard to New York, and when she arrived in New York, it had been 4 days, 17 hours, 42 minutes since she had departed. This meant she captured the westbound Blue Riband from the Mauritania, who had held this record for 19 years. So go cry in the corner, Mauritania. Now back to the video, as her maiden voyage marked the first time that mail carried by a ship arrived before the ship, thanks to the seaplane I mentioned earlier. Now, on the Bremen's return voyage, she broke the East Bland Blue Riband record. This is the first time a ship had broken two records on her first two passages. She lost both of these records, one in 1930 to her sister, the Europa, and one in 1932 to the SS Rex. So, never mind. But she'd soon have much worse things to worry about, as when the Nazis gained power in Europe, and more specifically Germany, the Bremen was used as a meeting place for na anti-Nazi demonstrators who became known as the Bremen Six, which led to an incident where the swastika that flew on her stern was torn off and thrown into the River Hudson, which led to it being adopted as Germany's national flag. Then, on the 11th of February 1939, she begun her South America cruise, which was the first time a ship of her size crossed the Panama Canal. Very impressive, I know. Then, in 1939, she begun her last voyage to New York. 
She, in this time, she'd made almost 190 transatlantic voyages in 10 years. Unfortunately though, the next few years wouldn't be as nice as the previous 10 years as the fog of war blanketed Europe. In September of 1939, when a failed Austrian painter decided to invade Poland, German High Command ordered all merchant ships to head for German ports immediately. However, the Bremen disobeyed these orders and headed towards New York, and after an extremely long period of being stuck in New York, she was hastily painted grey for camouflage and headed towards the Russian port of Mamansk. Using the bad weather and high speed, she avoided Navy cruisers. She arrived at port just as the Winter War broke out. Then, on the 10th of December, the Bremen quickly headed back towards the port of Bremerhaven, arriving on the 13th. During this voyage, she was spotted by the S-class submarine, the HMS Salmon, but this sub was forced to dive by the escorting plane Dornier Du-18. After being forced to dive, her lieutenant commander decided not to torpedo the Bremen, as he thought she wasn't a legal target. Despite escaping this close call, however, the end of the Bremen was right around the corner. The Bremen would not survive the war, as sadly, during her time as a barrack ship, she turned into the Europa and burst into flames, due to an arson committed by a 14-year-old crew member called Walter Schmidt. I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyways, while she was docked in Bremerhaven, this fire gutted her. Schmidt was later sent the way of the French Revolution and met Mr. Guillotine at the very old age of 15. In 1942, her dismantling began and she was dismantled to the waterline so the steel could be used for munitions. Then, in 1946, what was left of the Bremen was towed up to the River of Wesler and beached on the sandbar off Blexen Nordam and was destroyed by explosives. Parts of a double hull still remain visible there to this day. Despite being largely forgotten to time, the Bremen still has a pretty large fan base. Proof of this is with the adorably named Bremen Junior, which was a tiny version of the Bremen crewed by two men. And now I want one! But enough about Bremen Junior, as in 2004 a stamp of the Bremen was made to commemorate this once great liner. <clears throat> Hello everybody, it is I, Captain Oblivious Mist, and I am back with yet another epilogue. And there goes my keyboard. Uh, just to let you know, um, this video has been in production for a while. So, hello! <laughs> finally out, finally finished. Uh, another little thing I'd just like to say. The reason why there has been no North German Lloyd videos this year is because the amount of times I've had to restart production on this one video. As thanks to a little thing known as my phone breaking, and then another little thing known as me accidentally deleting the original script, I've had to restart production from scratch, which uh, is no easy task. So, as you're watching this, this video has been in production on and off for about a year or so, as I've begun work on this video, after I finish off the Europa video. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Another thing I'd just like to note, uh, the ending of this video was actually not written by me. It was actually written by my girlfriend, so this was also my very first video with a co-writer. So isn't that a nice little tip bit? Anyways, I do plan to get another video out uh, some stage this week on a Canadian Pacific ship. Um, it should hopefully be announced on my community tab and should hopefully be coming out either Sunday, depending on when I've uploaded it, of this week, or Monday of next week. It depends on when I've uploaded it. And my next video after that should hopefully be my Christmas ship special thingy-ma-bob. But anyways, enough blabbering on, as I've got a very tight upload schedule. So, thank you all for watching, everyone, and I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye!